Welcome to another one, another episode of Inside the Line, Real Stories by Real Cops. I'm Dave Radigan, alongside Dale Lawrence, retired police officer. And uh, all I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to say thanks for listening. And number two, I'm going to say share it. If you like it, share it. We're trying to build our audience. We are actually building our audience week by week. Yes, we are, Dave. Absolutely. So, happy to... Happy slow to, burn, baby. A slow burn. I like to think of it more as a slow cl- slow climb. <laughs> but uh, if you want to believe yourself to be... Uh, if you like the burn analogy, we'll go with yeah. burn. We're going to talk about technology today. Uh, eyes on innovation, police technology. We're going to talk about robot dogs later on, which is one of my favorite topics. We're going to talk about facial recognition, which is really in the news, particularly in places like Hong Kong where it's being used to identify protesters. And, and uh, here, I, would call, I think we would call them domestic terrorists. I don't know what they call yeah, them. I'm sure that a Trudeau dude up there in Canada is probably using it too. The Why Trudeau, wouldn't you? The Trudeau. I, think, I bet every law enforcement agency that's got the money is using the technology. Facial because, recognition? Yeah. Absolutely. Because yeah. it, it's so, there's so many different companies out there that are making the software so it's a very competitive market. A lot of companies will come into a police department and they'll try to sell their product. Yeah. And kind of a like, lot what, of it, what's the guy, the Wizard of Oz? Who was that guy? He was selling uh, the snake oil salesman. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like snake oil salesmen because... Why would, you, why would you give a spoiler alert? That's a spoiler alert for <laughs> Oh, it is? Yeah. Why? Because the Wizard of Oz? Yeah. Oh, I don't want to give away the ending. <laughs> I can't believe you give away the ending to the Wizard of Oz. Oh, but Jesus. yes, there is snake oil salesman. And I think technology, I think you're thinking of crypto, but uh, but why why do you compare it to a snake oil cell? Well, I think that some of the, let's go, let's start out with facial recognition software. Great tool. Let's start out with the negatives of it, okay? Uh, What negatives? Well, the, (laughs) well, the, the negatives, and there are lawsuits out there. What happens is, so a lot of companies make the software, and some are very effective, and they go on a mathematical formula of the distance of your eyes from your lips yep. and your lips from your nose and your chin from your eyes and the height of your forehead you, you know what and I, the depth of your eyes. And, yes, go ahead. And, and you know what I can tell our listeners about us, Dale? Yes. Perfectly symmetrical. Absolutely. Large large features, a large eyes. There's a little crow magnon over there, it's, but... <laughs> it's what makes us so attractive around the world because this is, you know, they've done studies on beauty. Oh, there you go. Sym- symmetry and large features. I, I don't know which large features. I think it's like the eyes and maybe the mouth, something like that. Yeah. But if you had ridiculously large, it might work against you. But, Absolutely. Uh, all right. Anyway, so so they look at certain points of like how how far it is from one eye to the other. I, I'm, I, th- there, I think there were like, what, 12? I believe there's 12 points. And so what happens is someone robs a, robs a bank. Yep. And they get a pretty much a close shot, straight on shot. They'll take a picture of the person. They'll put that picture in the software program. As long as that person, at least initially, is from the state where it happened, they'll search the state database. Okay. And if that person is potentially in there, the program will give three or four, maybe five people that match very close yep. to that because it's not 100% accurate. Yeah. So some programs it- are in the 80s. Some are in the 70s. Some people will even say summer in the 50s. It all depends on who you speak so to. So you're saying it's like Wikipedia. It's a great place to start your research. Yeah, it's, it's a good place to start research. But unfortunately, there are people out there who've been arrested based on facial recognition alone. They've had an alibi. They gave the alibi that they were nowhere near that bank when it got robbed. And the person was arrested and the cops didn't do their due diligence. They arrested him. They locked him up. And then a week later, they found out, oh, he had an alibi and Four or five people verified that alibi. He was playing basketball for at a, at a high school game, but they still arrested him just based on the software alone, and that's a no-no. Yeah, that is a no-no. I mean, that's bad police work. Absolutely, I mean, it's think bad about what it does work. to this guy's life. For some people, being arrested is just another. It's just oh, another arrest. This yeah, month. certain. Yeah, it's obviously certain people who have criminal backgrounds and they live in bad neighborhoods. They've been maybe have been arrested five times. Right. But poor old Dave Radigan being accused of an armed robbery right. just because you fell within the parameters of just that software. Just because the guy who, who robbed whatever they did was a very handsome guy. Yeah. I wind up in jail. And, and you and, didn't do it. And I didn't do it and I miss how many gigs? I how many there gigs do you miss? Yeah. I miss the gig. I can't I how many people can I call? I can't check my account. It's horrible. <laughs> I throw my life into disarray. Absolutely. So, so so that's kind of the negative of the software. But is that the problem of the software? Is that the problem of either the training or I mean ultimately that's bad police work. It's bad police work because like you said earlier, it should be a tool 
for investigators to at least identify a few people that look like the person in the picture and just try to interview them. Yeah. interrogate them and see what they have to say. Yeah, you look like you look like the suspect who robbed the bank. Period. We 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 even if they and I don't know. Would you tell somebody you rung them up on? Yeah, you're gonna yeah facial recognition. Absolutely, software? they're gonna say uh, there was an armed robbery a week ago, and we used facial recognition software, and we had five people come up as possible suspects. You being one of them would like to speak to you. Now you don't have to speak to them. You have the you have the right to the Fifth Amendment. You don't have to say anything. Yep. So you don't have to say anything. Which a, lot, which a lot of people will tell you to say, if you're innocent or guilty, no matter what the situation is, don't say any. I mean, I've heard this before. Don't say anything to the cops. Well, yeah, because you never know what type of cop you're speaking to. That cop may be 100% sure in his or her mind that he's got you. Yeah. I know it's right again. I know he did it. I don't care how many people the computer spit out as potential suspects. I know Radigan. He's been dirty since day one. It's yeah. him. Filthy, and then they oh. and they focus on that. They get tunnel vision, and, and they uh, do a bad job of investigation. Yeah, and an innocent person gets harmed. Right, and and this case, but this is the case of all right. So you've given them a tool that can be misused, but it's it's not the the problem isn't the tool. Well, I mean, some if I programs, give- some companies are going to sell you a shitty program that's maybe fifty or sixty percent accurate, whereas other companies have done a really good job, and they might be in the high eighty percent. Right. That's most, true with any, tools, any computer type program. Most tools. Absolutely. All right. There's garbage out there and there's good stuff. Yep. But obviously, facial recognition can help. It's used at airports. It's used to identify terrorists. It's used at the border. I shouldn't say it's used at the border because everyone just runs in and is right. do whatever <laughs> yeah. they want. Yeah, and it's not used at the border. We, as we know, everybody comes in. They walk right through the border. We know what, We know you've been watching Fox News. <laughs> but let me ask you this question. Because here's the other place they've been used. They've been used in terms, in, in, um, in some places, they've been used to identify peaceful protesters uh, or, or demonstrators at demonstrations. And it doesn't necessarily distinguish between the violent and the nonviolent demonstrators. Absolutely. Because all, if all you have is a picture of someone that was there in the area. Yep. I can't be in the area of, of a demonstration or I can't be in the neighborhood. If there's a robbery, just because I'm in the neighborhood, does that mean I did it? No, it doesn't. But unfortunately, in law enforcement, if, if you're a known criminal and you were in the area, the cops might right. focus on you. So it has to be used professionally. It has to be used responsibly by whatever police department is using it or whatever law enforcement agency is using it. And if it's used that way, then absolutely, you can identify Terrorists coming through an airport, hopefully. You can identify criminals coming over the border who have at some point been kicked out of this right. country. Now they're but, trying but, to come back two but years I, later. I think the issue is the demonstrators don't want to, if you're, if you're a nonviolent yeah. demonstrator, you don't want to be lumped in with the, with, the, with the criminals and the crooks. But of course, there's another element to that, which is a lot of protesters have taken to covering their face in, in Hong Kong, particularly, and, and here with Antifa. You probably heard Antifa would, you know, frequently they come masked. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, there's an issue about that. You know, do you allow people to protest with masks on in a public demonstration? Because how public is it if you've got a mask on? I suppose this could probably yeah, yeah. I don't think anyway. it's going to, I don't yeah. think you're ever going to get 100% accuracy of, of how it works. Or are you going to get 100% of the people agree that you should even have it? I think as someone, a former law enforcement person, I think it's a great tool if used appropriately and responsibly. Uh, this is uh, also a good time to mention, I, I just want to plug the website, insidetheline.org, or email us at realstoriesbyrealcops at gmail.com. And now we'll move on to biometrics. And biometrics basically is going to be a, a few things. It's going to be your voice recognition. It's going to be your handprint, your palm print. It's going to be your gait analysis, meaning how someone walks iris recognition, which is very similar to the facial recognition software. So all that stuff is is good stuff. And and then again, it's a tool that investigators use to identify a person. I can tell you a story from from years ago, probably I'd say 20 years ago, there was a old VHS tape that was sent out to local departments of a individual who was a suspect in a violent assault. Okay. So he was in, in a parking lot of a restaurant. They had a grainy picture of him. They couldn't identify his face, but you could identify his body and his movements. And he beat the living shit out of a guy, but he was a martial artist. Okay. And I, I saw the video 
about three or four times, and I looked at his movements, the way he yeah. fought, and I said, I think I know that guy. He used to train at a boxing club yeah. that I worked at, yeah. or I worked out at, I should say, back in the day. And I go, boy, that looks like a guy by the name of Manny. That was, okay. that's his name. He's dead yep. now. Okay. <laughs> so I, I looked at it a couple of times. I called the police department, the local police department, a couple of, a couple of doors over, a couple of cities over, and I said, hey, that looks like Manny. He's a martial artist. In another community, he has a martial arts studio. You might want to look at him because his movements are very similar. The way he threw his punches and the way he threw his hicks and the way he stand, he sure. stood. Sure. I recognize that from working at a gym of which he was a member for years. Yeah, and, and it you're turned out be, to be him. And you're going to be able to tell. In, in the case of somebody who's a trained fighter, you can tell if they lean on their left I'm, hand. I'm a trained or, punching bag. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. That's a good point. But but let's say this. You would probably know if you got into the ring with, let's say, I don't know, let's uh, use a famous boxer, Marvin Hagler. You would know that, boy, he really hurt me from the left side more than the right side. And if you went with Sugar Ray Leonard, you'd be like, boy, he was quick, and he hit me in all kinds of places really quick, and I didn't see anything. So the same way if you're watching somebody, yeah, you're going to tell somebody favors their left if somebody's a little bit of a plotter. And, and being a fighter, obviously there are things you yeah, would so look that, for. Yeah, that so that was 15 years ago when technology was, like I said, it was a VHS tape. And, and let me just say this. Since, you, since you're... You gave away the ending to Wizard of Oz. Let me just give a re- let me just let me just spoiler alert. The usual suspects. One of the suspects had a distinctive body movement that we re- we learned was not a real body movement at the end of the mov- movie. Oh, really? I a didn't distinctive, know that. Yeah, distinctive walk, distinctive walk. So, yeah, so things like that are, are actually pretty good. And and fingerprint analysis is great now because when I first came on, you'd walk into the station or someone would be under arrest. Yep. And you'd take their fingerprints and put some ink on their hands and then roll it on a card. Yep. They'd take that card Good and then days. mail it out. Yep. And then six weeks later, or maybe sometimes four weeks later, if you were lucky, they'd tell you, hey, that guy's wanted for three homicides in Florida. Do you still have him? We're like, no, we, we arrested him for drinking in public. We did his fingerprints and we let him go. Yeah. So a lot of people who were wanted across the country and across the world who might have come in contact with law enforcement and they were arrested, and therefore they were fingerprinted, got away. But nowadays, if you get arrested and your fingerprints are taken, which is pretty standard in probably 100% of police departments, yep. you're going to find out within an hour that those prints that you took from that guy or that girl, it's just like CSI. They're, they're wanted somewhere. It's just like CSI. It's all solved in, in the hour that it takes to shoot the show. <laughs> you you solve the murder in an hour. So the, so the old days uh, of burning your fingerprints... Off day, like when you were, you know, you were a yeah. little criminal, you yeah, know, living in Charlestown, Massachusetts. I would, I would burn, you my finger- burn your fingerprints off. Sometimes I'd do that. Sometimes I'd put wax over them if it was just for a, an afternoon job. And sometimes I'd use a, uh, I would use a razor blade to to cut them away. These, <laughs> this is all stuff I all learned. All to steal this some is- candy from a co- corner store. <laughs> <laughs> this is all stuff I learned when I was uh, reading about the FBI in sixth grade. Oh, there you go. Uh, but it was I was fascinated with FBI and fingerprints and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, but you, you really can't do that because now they have palm print analysis. Yep. Now they take everything into context, especially if you have a video of the crime. You, you do a, you do a, so here's what I want to do. If I want to if I want to rob some some if a I bank. rob a bank. Rob, rob a, bank. a bank. We'll go back to that. First of all, I I I lead with my left and I uh, and I develop a funny walk. I just I just kind of walk in with my with a funny walk, like from the Benny, Benny Hill show. I uh, wear a mask so they can't take a fa- facial recognition. And my mask looks just like a human face, like false face from Batman. So they get the wrong name of the facial recognition software. I lead with my left because I'm right-handed. And then if they do catch me, I've burnt off my fingerprints. I've burnt my palm prints uh, in, a, in a way that uh, will, will change the way they look. And uh, what else do I need to do? Well, if you leave any DNA at the scene, Dave... Uh, like blood or saliva, or if you ha- happen to urine, piss your pants or something like that, uh, and you leave it there, or sneeze, they're going to get you with the DNA. Or sneeze, or sneeze. If you sneeze and you get some... Oh, come on. He sneezed, <laughs> he sneezed on that counter. How many people have sneezed on that counter? Yes, no, I mean, absolutely. A lot of this technology can be beaten. If you really put your mind to it, you can try to counter yep. how, it, how it operates, if you know how it operates. All right, so we tell that's what we're telling people, how absolutely, to do that. Absolutely, yeah. Now, does every department... This is... This is uh, I, I have a... Uh, a friend who does, uh, he speaks, he's a college professor in science, and he talks about um, the CSI stuff. And he talks about the differences between the television show 
and in real, life. real life. You know, like television show, the labs. Have you have you actually see CSI shows yes, and I shows have. like that? So you you know that the labs are always really cool, very pristine. And they're lit like all a the night, best equipment. Yep, lit like a nightclub. And then you go to a police lab, and there's a linoleum, and there's a uh, there's yeah. I mean, stuff. there's a lot of secondary stuff in the lab that can actually contaminate a sample of blood or, or a <laughs> semen <laughs> sample or something like that. It's Absolutely, a, yeah. It's never as though it looks on TV. However, there are a lot of people in law enforcement that are highly professional and have a lot of pride in what they do. And they really want to make sure that if they're investigating a crime that is using all this technology, they, they do it correctly and responsibly. Yeah, nobody, but then again, nobody, there are nitwits out there also. Yeah, nobody and nobody wants to be that nitwit who lets somebody get away because they, I don't know, what's the word? Screwed up, uh, was screwed incompetent. Up, screw, screwed up, <laughs> incompetent, didn't care, any of, the, any of that stuff. It, which, you know, the human element is unfortunately a big thing in law enforcement. Yeah, regardless of the technology, humans still operate it and interpret it. Yes. So it, you can have all the technology in the world, but if it's used incorrectly or it's used with a bias, like yep. we talked about facial recognition, yeah. if you use it with a bias, a prejudicial bias, then you're going to just, you know, you're going to obviously identify the wrong person and possibly convict the wrong person. Right, which is horrible. It's a no-no. Horrible. Yeah, it's a no-no. It's not what you want to do. Uh, now we're going to return it to one of my favorite topics. I don't know. Is this is this a thing that everybody in law enforcement knows and the public doesn't, or is this the thing that actually the public does know? But when, they, when, when cops first got computers in their cars, there was an issue of distracted driving. Yes. Was this something that cops, I mean, I, I've, I've heard about this from cops. I don't know if it's something that's it's funny every 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 show we talk about what I could possibly do to make noise that's going to wind up on the uh, on the podcast and I was just flipping. If you through just papers. take your meds before the show, Dave, it'll calm you down. I have all not, your little nervous twitches I've won't had, I've had come one out cu- in the vocals. Of I've the had podcast. one. I've had one cup of coffee. All right. That's all I've had. I should have had three, but I've only had one. So bear with me. Anyway, so so distracted driving, is that something that every cop knows happens? Because what happened was, let's just say 15 years ago, they put computers in cruises. And what you could get from that information, you can get criminal histories of a person you deal with on the street. You can run a license plate to see if that place is active. You can run people for warrants. So what happens is a cop's driving down the street. He may see a person that he knows. Yep. He may see a vehicle that he knows. He'll try to run the plate quickly on his own computer. So he's looking down, looking up, looking down all the while he or she is driving. Yeah. And people, officers have gone in accidents. They've hit people. They've hit cars. There was an incident, a case where I worked at, where an officer veered off the road and killed a lady. I'm not saying that he was distracted doing that, but there was some distraction that he claimed at his trial that caused that accident. So absolutely, it's not a good, it's a good tool to have a computer in your car because you can get that information very quickly, but it's not a good tool if it's used incorrectly or irresponsibly by the officer. So that brings us to this, voice technology. And, and let, me just, let me just roll this back because it's the same as having a cell phone in your car and texting and driving. No difference. Same, absolutely exactly no the same. Difference. We think we can do two things at once, but in fact, what we're doing is we're doing one thing for a short period of time, then the other thing for a short period of time, and then the other thing short period of time, and then the other thing. In other words, your attention goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, kind of like when you're watching TV and doing your homework and you get the same result, which is you you think you're doing it. You think you're doing both, but in fact, you're really not. When you're, when you're paying attention to your homework, you're really not paying attention to the TV. You're just going back and forth. That's why all the students in your class are uh, C plus at best. There's a huge issue right now. There's a, hu- there's, a, there's a huge issue. My students are great. They're the exceptions. But there's a huge issue right now with, with attention span. Absolutely. And If I you turn th- on to Fox, they have a show just about attention span. Really? <laughs> Absolutely, they do. What's it called? It's something, I don't know, something like the attention span is diminishing because all the apps people have on their phones yeah. and they can't pay attention anymore. Well, that's that's definitely the theme. So that's, that's what they're the trying theme. to do with, with cruisers. They're trying to make the cruiser or make the computer in that cruiser voice activated. So all the officer has to do is run Massachusetts 666-324 yeah. and comes back with the plate. But you know what? Did I, I just say 666? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, you did. I did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll try to take that out. I don't want to offend anyone. Yeah. Just say <laughs> just say 333. That he was only half bad. Yeah, the, so that's, a, that's a great technology. Absolutely yeah. great technology. It's a great technology, but there are there are studies now that, that are indicating that talking on your cell phone is as distracting to some as being people. being drunk. 
Um, I've I've heard that I've heard that, but I've also heard that as texting. I can't I can't believe that talking on the phone is the same as texting. Why don't you go around the block and I'll text, and you drive and see if anyone picks off a kid coming out of school. <laughs> we can have a contest. Yes, yeah, so you can pick a the, kid off of the crosswalk. The, the way, yeah. <laughs> Another good thing with this technology, or I should say, there's two good things. One of them might not be as good. The first one is you're a police officer in a city, a large city like Boston. Let's yep. say you didn't grow up in Boston. Sure. And they send you to certain neighborhoods. Those computers are going to have GPS in there, and you're going to have mapping, driving directions. All yeah. you have to do is say, take me to 37 Hanover Street, and it's going to direct you. You clearly have not used the GPS in the city. <laughs> Turn left, turn right, turn left, turn right. I, I know an officer who was, who was a reserve officer in a community. He lived in that community, and he could never get, he had a very bad sense of direction, and he lost oh. his job for it. Yeah. He could yeah, never get to where he had quickly. to be. Wow. And we, we don't have technology in, in a lot of the cruises like that in Massachusetts just yet. But you, just, you don't even have to have it in a cruise. You just have it on your own cell phone. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it's something that is good. And, and the other thing is, and this is a thing where law enforcement unions kind of go against it because these computers have GPS tracking software in there. So if, if I wanted to take a nap behind the Walgreens and my cruiser was located behind the Walgreens for a half an hour or an hour or two hours or three hours, then the people in charge would know that. Right. Because it's on a big computer screen. That's Cruisers that's- in there, and they shouldn't be, a cruiser really shouldn't be static in one location yeah. for more than 10 or 15 minutes unless they're on a call. And a lot of um, a lot of industries, most, most industries now have that kind of fleet tracking software to see basically, yeah, somebody's at their girlfriend's for two hours when yeah. they're supposed to be working, they can see it, but they can also see things like if they get a call about a, a cop or, you know, you know whatever, a, a cop doing this or that or this that they don't like and they call up. You know, we look and it's like, well, Dale Lawrence, it wasn't Dale Lawrence, he was across here. Or somebody calls and says, hey, Dale, I saw Dale Lawrence and he was doing this, blah, 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 blah. A, a false accusation. A, a, a false accusation or, or a mistaken uh, accusation. Maybe they saw somebody, they thought it was you. Yes. You know, um, who knows? You know, maybe it was like the stripper who arrived to their bachelorette party. Yeah, and I saw rude. Dale Lawrence dropping a stripper off at her house or something like that. Yeah, or, or while well, I'm talking about the guy coming in with a cop uniform. Oh, the stripper. cop uniform but, stripper. Oh, the but, male stripper. But, okay. Yeah, but anyway, but so you, so you can basically say, and that's kind of something I've heard from other fleet management uh, companies that use fleet management software is that it can be used sometimes as a defense. Like I, it wasn't our truck that was that, that ran you off the road because our truck so was. That, it, it has pros road. and cons. Absolutely has pros and cons on that. Okay. Now we're going to get to the good one. The robots? The robots. Oh, the robots. I love robots. Those are great. This one is great. Robot dogs at the border. Tell me about that. Yeah, I, I literally just saw that today. There was, a, there was an article on the internet, so it has to be true. They're trying out <laughs> robot dogs on the border. Also trying out very small all-terrain vehicles. These kids nowadays who are great at computer games video games, and they're able to manipulate those little joysticks. Mm-hmm. Those, those people are great at that because they can manipulate these animals or these robot animals to go anywhere. They can go in rough terrain. They can be out all night. You don't have to worry about heat stroke. You don't have to yeah. worry about anything. Well, they, I think their run power is, is limited by batteries. I, I was, um, well, I would think at the border it's probably solar powered because it's nice and sunny down there, ain't it? It would be a good idea if it was solar power, Absolutely. but I don't think it is. I think it's. I think it's. Yeah, a, that's great. But you're limited by battery use. Yeah. And, but and, back in the day, Dave, if you were a rookie cop, right? Yeah. You're a rookie cop, and there's someone barricaded in the house. Yeah. Guess what? You're going in first. You're breaking the door down. If they start shooting and start swinging, rookie Dave Radigan's going to take the bullet for the team, and the rest of us will go in and clean up. Nowadays, you send they send robots in. Yeah. Robots that have pepper spray attached to them. Robots that have. They're armed. You can shoot through a robot. You can Robo-cop. do a lot of things. Robocop, baby. Yeah, you can do a lot of things. And, and there's a lot of ACLU are kind of against it because their statement, and I couldn't believe it, it doesn't make it fair anymore. Now the government has the advantage. Did they really say <laughs> Absolutely that? Absolutely, they oh, did. That's a I guess if much. you want to be a criminal, it's almost like we don't, criminals don't play fair. And I'm not saying that the government or law enforcement doesn't play fair, but if technology can enhance the safety in law enforcement and can also enhance law enforcement's ability to catch criminals yeah. who wouldn't want that other right. than right. the criminal. Well, I think the, the, uh, the argument, too, is that people who are sneaking into the border, uh, crossing the border, it's a different c- category of criminal than 
you know, the drug gangs, Absolutely. stuff like that. So I think, I think what the, 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 the material that I read just said, it militarized a situation that didn't have to be militarized. Yeah, because obviously those those robot, the dogs and the robots, obviously are used primarily in, in the military. It's it's a, a tactic that militaries will use. Yeah, and they and they're great for bombs. Absolutely, great bomb, mind, a bomb mind, deterrent mind, dog. Mind, yep. Or you or you wrap some explosives on the electronic dog and you just have them roam down the yeah. Or you send downtown through, Afghanistan and blow them right up, baby. Yeah. So these robots are, are great. They're great. They're you ever great. go to Stop and Shop? There's a robot called oh, Marty. That well, that was not great. Yeah, that one's not great. I'm annoyed with that guy. He's always in the way. He's always in the way. Yeah, he, all he can do is pick up a spill in aisle eight, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I think, but I, th- I know the question is: Do you do you militarize? Do you militarize the, the streets of Chicago, the streets of Boston, with right. all these robots? Do, do you militarize the the, the border? streets of Chicago? Absolutely. Yeah, the streets you militarize Chicago, the border. Absolutely. Would, here's the question: Would it be better off? But of course, the, I think the problem with putting it into an urban setting, I, I assume that these things could be captured and someone on the street could probably grab one. Yep. And then the other thing is, somebody on the street could it could kill the wrong person. Absolutely, kill the wrong person, and that's you know you don't want that to happen. So well, it's going to have to be a trial and error thing. We might lose a few people a day, but in the end, ten years from now, it'll be a great technology. Yeah, if you're a criminal, you're never going to like enhancements in law enforcement. But if you're an average citizen, if you're a law enforcement oh, professional, no, no, no. The, you're going to love it. All right, what are we going to go do? Oh, video doorbell. Oh, this, so this is, is great. This is, the, this is the reason I gave up my life of crime. Absolutely. There's video cameras everywhere, and you don't know where. You absolutely have no idea where they are. Every business, neighborhood, every house, every other house, has a video camera, and they're all high definition. They're 4K. Yeah. They're infrared. They operate in bad weather. They operate at night. They operate during sunlight. It doesn't matter. If you're someone who breaks into a house, and that house happens to have that, they're going to at least get a great picture of you. Now, whether they'll be able to identify you or not, it's another story. If, you are, if you're on a crime spree and you're traveling through neighborhoods, they will track the route that someone might have got into a neighborhood, and they'll ask all those people in that neighborhood, can we view your video? And they might find someone who has a certain gate, a certain walk. They might be able to get a good picture of that person, put yep. it in facial recognition. A lot of crimes are solved. A lot of petty crimes have been solved and have stopped, like burning of cars. You and can't yet, even burn a car anymore, Dave. Yeah, that's terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> you owe money on your car, you can't even burn it because you're going to get caught. These video cameras are everywhere. I had I had this one, I think I told you about this girlfriend, she actually videoed us having sex. Oh, really? Without without my permission. And then <laughs> she, she tried to blackmail me. Oh, wow. She bla- and I'm like, I'm not going to pay blackmail for a 20-second tape. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Oh, so is that is that a true story? No. Or was that a joke? Oh, okay, <laughs> no, that's, a, that's a joke. This is a twenty second tape. Oh there. yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah video been... video doorbells, the ring, whatever you have out there. Those are great. Law enforcement uses those all the time. Yeah, to help them solve crimes or at least identify a suspect. I'm I'm gonna guess. And this has probably been written about. It's probably something other people know. But I'm going to guess that if you go to certain parts of New York City, you could probably follow somebody for blocks based only on security cameras. And if you go to some suburban neighbor neighborhoods, I bet you could follow somebody all the way down the street. Absolutely, because what you would do is you would program whatever software they use f- for those videos. You would program it to identify that person based on certain biometrics of how that person's walking, their height, their weight, what color clothing they're wearing. You can program a lot of those things into that computer and you can try to pick up that person at different parts of the city in the event someone was murdered and you have that person walking a mile to the crime scene then walking back and you at least put that person in the area where his wife was found dead under suspicious circumstances and you at least have an idea of where you might want to start your investigation. Right. Well, I'll give you a simpler one. Somebody steals a package off your doorstep. Oh, absolutely. You're in a, you're in a, you're in a nice neighborhood. Everyone's got, all the neighbors have, have video. They've all got the video doorbells. You know, you go to one, you see the guy with the orange coat, take it. Then you just watch him get into his car. You zero into his car. You know, you watch the other video, video you doorbell. You try to zoom in onto his license plate. Yeah. And then you get his license plate. Then you go to his house. He comes to the door. He's got his yellow, uh, I mean, sorry, his orange jacket on. You say, you're under arrest, Mr. Roberti. <laughs> Unfortunately, what happens there is it happens so often that 
A lot of police departments don't have the manpower to investigate all those cases, and we usually just refer them back to Amazon and say your package was stolen. Every once in a while, if you have a serial package thief who we know is involved in eight to 10 of them, you will try to get that person. But a lot of the random ones, they're very hard to prosecute because well, this is, you don't this have is, the manpower to do it. Right, and this is one of the other issues with, with citizens. You know, we're all raised with the idea that if somebody commits a crime against us, the police will investigate and they will bring that person to justice. But the reality is that there is so much criminal... A um, $100 package some, from Amazon, which is insured, isn't worth eight hours of an officer investigating that that crime. It just, it just isn't worth it. You're not going to be able to take those people off the street. And when you do arrest them, they're, out, they're not even going to be arrested. A lot of them won't even be arrested. You might just get the package back. Or even if they are arrested, they're going to be released. Not, why they, wouldn't they be released? Why wouldn't they be arrested? You see somebody taking a package off. If you off, see them do well, it, Well, let's Dave. put it this way. Your video camera records them. Yeah. It, uh, like I, I said, it's, it's the legal system. Hey, let me tell you something. They don't protect you. Real stories by real cops. Yeah. Inside the line, inside the line, I'm telling you that a lot of cops, you don't have the time. Yeah. I don't care if you get the guy dead to rights, you grab the package, you tell the guy to screw. You don't have the time to deal with that it's nuisance, petty shit. If he's a serial one, he's doing it all the time, and maybe he's a peeping Tom to boot or a sex offender, you want him. Just the nitwit stealing your package and reselling it, you just do don't you, have do the manpower. Think, do you think anybody does it once? Absolutely not. But like I said, if it's not a crime of violence, then that's the re- that's the reality. If it's not a crime of violence, yeah. then it, it's it's going to be up to every department's unwritten policy on how they want to deal with it. Right. And that's the thing. The laws are on the books that say this is a crime, this is a crime, this is a crime. But the reality is... Dave, some- there was a guy who tried to assassinate a politician down south, shot up the place. They let him out on bail. Do you think someone who steals... Your box of Ritz crackers that you got from Amazon, they're going to arrest the guy? They don't. They I look, like Ritz crackers. Yeah, well, you, I know you get enough for enough for a couple of months. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, it, like I said, it's, people wish the cops would. Everyone wants everyone arrested, yeah. but they don't have the manpower to do it. All right. So, they're, all right, good. So, we're going to move from there. Shot to, spotter. Oh, I love this one, too. Tell me about uh, Shot Spotter. Well, basically, Shot Spotter is it, it's a it's a program usually in very high crime neighborhoods where they have a lot of gun violence. Chicago, inner city New York, Boston, places like that, Atlanta. Any area where they have a lot of gun violence, they will have computers that will identify sounds that are the same decibel as a gunshot. And when they hear that, the crime analysis unit or the dispatch unit We'll get that right away, and they'll say, hey, we had a gunshot within a quarter mile of Hanover and Main Street in Boston. So they'll send cruisers out there, and they'll look for something. A lot of times when you hear the gunshot, a lot of times there's a victim. It's not the Wild West where people just shoot up in the air. When someone's shooting a gun in the inner city, they're usually shooting at somebody. Yeah, you don't want to waste the bullets. Yeah. It's not like the Wild <laughs> West. Wild, well, the wild, wild West, they just shoot up in the air. All the time. It's like you think to yourself, How, what are you doing? Where are you going to get more bullets for this? Or do you go and find them? You can't find them. They're ruined. What's that? They go through the barrel. They, never mind. <laughs> All right. So the shot spotter basically is, is used to... It's a way so, for law enforcement to know that a potential shooting just happened. If someone shot, they might find out five or 10 minutes later. They might not find out at all. If someone shoots someone in a park and there's only two people there, the guy that got shot and the guy that did the shooting, the guy that did the shooting isn't going to call 911 and say, hey, I just shot someone. So they might not find the person for a day or two or whatever the case may be. But if they find them sooner, they could save their lives and they could solve the crime. Absolutely, and solve the crime. So that's what... And, And they don't... And they don't... Let me ask you this. When people call, they say, I heard shots. I mean, I could have heard a shot. You I could hear have fireworks. Heard. You can hear a lot of things. Yeah. And now does a, does a, does a, I remember somebody with a handgun, animal control officer was, was there was a rabid skunk or something and he, and he killed it. And the shot, I wouldn't identify that as a gunshot. Cause he probably, he might've had a, a small. Yeah. Small caliber. Yeah. Cause you don't want the round to ricochet and hit some poor little kid on a swing set in the next yard over. No. No. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. So, yes, shot spotters are programmed to certain decibels of what a gunshot should sound like in that area. Including including small caliber? Uh, you know, it all depends on what they would program it to be. But, okay. yes, small caliber. But Is it more accurate than it would be 
if I if I call in and I say, "Hey, I heard gunshots next door." Well, yeah, absolutely. And I've never heard a gunshot, or I've only heard it when I've gone hunting. Is it really that much different than an M80 going off or a car well, backfiring? An, 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 an M80 is distinct. A backfire on a car could be distinct, but they're going to send the, the cops out there anyway. I know. Okay, they will. Yeah, they absolutely. They'll send them out, and they'll they'll look. And they'll are they try to find? Are they are they generally accurate? When somebody calls, they say, "Hey, I've heard somebody sh- somebody shoot. I think somebody's shooting a gun a block away." I don't know how accurate they are. Meaning, does does Boston PD get a hundred activations for the um, shot spotter in a year? And out of those hundred, were eighty of them actual people who got shot? Yeah. So I don't know that data, but they're they're again they're a tool to send officers to a certain area yep. that's been identified as a potential gun. And we'll shot. also and we'll also assume. We'll assume that... Um, assume this. In a bad neighborhood, a high-crime neighborhood in Chicago, yep. you can assume that someone was just shot. I know, no, you no. find the person is another saying, story. I'm saying the technology is going to get better. It's going to get qu- It's going to get better, quicker, and cheaper. And more accurate. All t- all t- oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, good. So with all these new, with all this new technology, <laughs> you, can't, you can't arrest the guy who stole my, my package? <laughs> well, yeah, we can arrest them, Dave, but it's a lot of times the, all the paperwork and the money involved for you. I was $50 waiting a package. long time for those for those towels from Bed Bath and Beyond. Dave, you don't have to order porn anymore from Europe. <laughs> you can just get it on the internet, all right? <laughs> I don't know from Europe. You got me ordering it from Europe. Well, didn't didn't like porn back in the day? You get it from like Denmark? Know. Absolutely, that you did back years ago, thirty years ago. Well, I I didn't. I didn't. But well, maybe- nowadays, you don't have to. You just go on the internet. Is that how you do it? Well, up yeah, up in your computer, Dave. How do, how do you do that? Pornhub.com or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> or or something like that, like <laughs> like you don't know. All right, automatic license plate recognition. Okay, so this is only for pre. This is only for pre-programmed license plate numbers. Well, what happens is you'll see the cars in the community. They're usually traffic cars, and they have a whole bunch of little lights on the car, and they circle the car. So what those little lights do? They're computers, and they're just reading all the license plates in the area. And they just randomly keep on reading the plates, and they use it for traffic enforcement. And, and they do it, so, and they do it so that and they'll see if that license plate paid a meter. Really? Absolutely. They, that's where it's used a lot now to enforce people who don't pay meters. You know, I I think that I think somebody mentioned this to me because we, we, when we were talking about the the cop going by and scanning your meter. Yes. Uh, you were saying you had to you had to read the read the the number in. Let's say this. Let's say I'm driving down the street, and, you, you, and your car's unregistered. Go ahead. If All your right. car's unregistered and there's a license plate reader on a cruiser in the area and that cruiser goes by you, they're going to spot that. Now, whether they spot it within 30 seconds or it pops up a minute later, the officer's going to know that there, a red Camaro just went by him on Cabot Street and he's going to turn around and try to find you. If he's, one, if he cares, yeah. okay, he might not care. Yeah. And two, if, if, he, if it was accurate enough within the last minute or so that he might be able to find you. Okay. So it just identifies stolen plates. Unregistered plates, uninsured vehicles, people who haven't paid the parking meter, stuff like that. But what it's really good for is identifying traffic patterns of people who might be dealing drugs into a community. Because if the average car travels in and out of a community twice during a day, but the license plate reader has identified a car that travels 20 times in and out of the community, what are they doing? Are they delivering food? Are they an Uber? Are they a Lyft? Or are they involved in criminal activity? So now it's up to you once you identify can, the vehicle. But they can be delivering anything. They can do the anything, city. yeah. Yeah. But if you think it's suspicious, if you run the plate and you find, oh, gee, the owner of that plate okay. has a history of drug dealing, you might want to, you got to put guys out in the street to try to deal with that guy, see if, in fact, he or she is dealing drugs in that community based on the information you got from the license plate reader. Okay. So you still have to have an officer Get on the street and deal with that person and do some research. The plate reader identifies do sta- traffic do, patterns. Do stadies have this? Absolutely, they do. I mean, all right, let's go. Let's wrap this up. I remember when these things first came up, and I was first introduced to these. It was about filming, and I thought these would be so great for filming. They were really expensive. Drones. Drones. Yep. Drones, because you could just mount the camera, and they would fly. They were like a small flying thing, and they have become such a cool toy and also such a giant nuisance. Oh, it, it, it brings so a whole ways. new element to someone who is a peeping Tom, 
because oh, you get a lot of, of calls, or we used to get a lot of calls of people sunbathing or people at the beach, and there's a bunch of girls or and there's kids there, and there's a drone flying around. It's such an easy way if you're a dirty old pervert, present company excluded, Dave. Thank you. Thank you're you. a dirty old that. pervert to use a drone that way. Or if you're a criminal, your house, you're selling drugs out of your house, you have a drone, and now you put the drone up there, you can see if the cops are coming. That's so, wild. Criminals use it. Cops use it. It's a great tool. It has endless uses. Yeah. It can also be used negative or positive. It all depends on who's controlling it. I've never I've never run one of these. I've seen people's drone videos, and, and they're, some are pretty cool. But I would think the other thing that you would have is you would have the temptation of, let's say you're, you're running a drone, and you're watching the video, and like all of a sudden you're, you see a little, little, kid's, or a little kid's baseball game. And you think, hey, let's see what shots I can get a little kid's bit. Oh, this is really cool. Look at this, da, 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 da. But you're watching little kids. Yeah. And nobody knows who you are. Absolutely. And if you're not a parent these days, I remember when I was 13 years old, there was somebody just taking pictures of kids. And and we were like, well, what are you doing? And, you know, we're 13 and there was, it was a different era. Absolutely. I I remember back in the day, we used to get sent to the beach all the time. I, I work in a beach community. I worked in a beach community and people would be down there taking pictures and it's usually young girls or parents will call, hey, there's a guy over there taking pictures. You walk up to the guy, hey, what are you doing? I'm taking pictures. Of what? Girls in bikinis? I mean, there's always that weird, creepy little factor of why they're doing it. In other words, you weren't a pervert before, but now given the you opportunity. You could be a pervert. Yeah you, could, yeah, you could become one. All right. My wife uses it to track her, all her Amazon packages. She gets up there and they tell her that the Amazon truck will be here in an hour and she goes searching for it. She goes searching for the Amazon truck, and then the Amazon truck shows and up. And bring her a pair of shoes. And then somebody, and shoes and then somebody she gets. And then somebody beats her to the porch, steals the and thing. And steal she, it. She gets them on the drone. And she tracks and them she, home. And she shows it to the cop, and the cop says, yeah, we don't care. And we don't care. We don't care. <laughs> we don't, we That's don't a good care. way to wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but drones are great. They, they're great. They use The military uses them. They're a great intelligence gathering type equipment, they're great. Why don't they just use the drones at the border instead of the dogs? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Just pull the border patrol out of there. Get about 100 drones. Arm them. If you come over. <laughs> arm them. What, are you going to shoot people? I don't know. Yeah, uh, we're escaping from <laughs> horrible poverty. We probably, they probably, I, think, I think that Tr- Trudeau guy up in Canada oh, probably has goodness. armed drones right now. Oh, if, if I, I think somebody should send armed drones to your house. <laughs> All right, that's it. This is, uh, I'm Dave Radigan. That's Dale Lawrence. This has been Inside the Line. Thanks for listening. We look forward to your continued patronage. Please share us. And if you have any ideas or any feedback on the show, send an email to Dale at realstoriesbyrealcops at gmail.com. He will listen to it. And if it's critical of me, he'll tell me about it. If it's critical of him, he'll just throw it right in the trash barrel. That's it. We're looking forward to more, to more shows, more content. Hope to hear from you.